Hey there, Dan Martell here, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use your growth ceiling. So if you're at a SaaS business, you have actually a SaaS growth ceiling for positive change. I'm gonna teach you how to understand when the ceiling is gonna happen, when the wall occurs, and what you can do in your business today to make sure that you push it out way out into the future and continue growing your business. Be sure to stay at the end. We're gonna tell you how to get access to my free churn buster cheat sheet guide, which covers the five principles you need to implement to increase retention of your revenue and also the nine box framework to be able to implement those churn busting tactics quickly. Let's get into it. So one of the first things that I do with all my new coaching clients, because I only coach B2B SaaS founders, software as a service, is teach them how to think about membership or reoccurring revenue. And the, the I'm gonna link up the tool I use below, but one of the concepts is the growth ceiling. That if you think about it, uh, if you have clients that cancel in any business, that at a certain point, your ability to add new customers per month will not outpace the amount of clients, the net, what's called the logo churn, the net logo churn that you lose on a monthly basis. Here's how the math works out, okay? I'm gonna do a little bit of math. I need you to think through this, but it's gonna be super simple. If you add 100 new clients a year, but you lose 20% of them, what you wanna do is take the total new number of clients, multiply times your churn rate, which is 0.20, and that'll let you know what's the max number of clients you'll ever be able to have because you're churning through the new ones on an annual basis to be able to replace the ones that you're, you're, you're adding the new ones to replace the ones you lost. So the number is 500. So you have 100 that you add every year, you have 20% annual churn. That means you'll max out at 100 uh, or 500 total clients. Now, What's your max revenue, the growth ceiling for your MRR, your monthly reoccurring revenue? Well, it's simple. You take your, a, a, it's called ARP. Some people call it ARPU, I call it ARPA. Average revenue, so if you're a B2C business, business consumer, you're gonna use average revenue per user. If you're B2B, which hopefully you are, if you're in SaaS, um, is business to business. It's your average revenue per account, okay? So let's just keep the number simple. Let's call it, you know, 100 bucks. If you multiply the 500 times 100, that equals $50,000 in ARR, annual reoccurring revenue. So with your current numbers, if that was you, you would max out at $50,000 of annual reoccurring revenue per year, okay? So regardless of what software business you're in, if you run your numbers, again, I'm gonna link to a calculator below so you can click it, put your numbers in for your own business and figure out when's the wall. The wall is when you're at 75% growth uh, potential because at first it can seem steep, but then you hit this kind of elbow. Uh, and then the flat, the, the, I call it the churn flat line. When you hit the growth ceiling is essentially when you're going to max out. Now, the good news is I'm going to teach you how to fix this. These are the three strategies by priority that you need to implement and focus on to push off your growth ceiling as far as possible into the future. Number one, reduce churn. So I know a lot of you guys are like, Dan, I've done a bunch of studying, churn, 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 how do I retain customers, et cetera. I'm just gonna walk you through the things that I do with my clients. Number one is we fix positioning. Too often, I see, especially for folks that come from an internet marketing background or a sales heavy background, is you're overselling the opportunity for your software. You're positioning it as a business opportunity. You're positioning it as the silver bullet to help businesses solve every problem in their life. And it's just not. So positioning is a key thing. Trial, the trial activation. So how you um, activate your new customers, either through a trial or even onboarding them after you sold them through a demo process, that needs to be figured out. And then finally, it's just what's your process for retention? Here's something simple. I was walking my client through this recently where on a monthly basis, they were losing $12,000 through uh, retention churn, okay? So essentially they weren't retaining the customer, they were losing $12,000 a month. And I asked them, I was like, what percentage of that would is lost because the customers never activate? He said, probably half. So I'm saying $6,000 a month, you're losing every month because the persons, the people signing up didn't know how to use the product yet. It's like, you could pay somebody half of that to just get on a call, set it up for them, support them 
and it compounds. And then over time, you can write the code to automate a lot of the manual process. But those are the areas that you need to focus on to reduce your churn at a high level. I'm going to tell you how to get access to my churn buster cheat sheet that goes into this at depth. But you want to make sure that the positioning, the conversion process, and your retention system is in place to reduce your churn. Number two, increase ARPA, average revenue per account. You, essentially, it's you want to monetize more. You want to figure out how can you uh, create more value for your customer and capture more value. So the, the low hanging fruit for many founders is number one, you need to have a value metric for pricing, meaning that the more value that's extracted from your product, the more the customer ends up paying. So this is sometimes you'll see this as a per seat pricing, some kind of metered pricing, you know, per transaction, number of contacts, et cetera. But that's value metrics. Number two, right off the bat, just so you know, you should just raise your prices. I know you're reading this and you probably thought about it. Um, the best SaaS companies, and, and here's a really great question to ask yourself how to deal with this. Uh, I got this from Andrew Grove from High Output Management. If somebody bought my business tomorrow, what's the first thing they would change? And I'll tell you, if I bought your SaaS business, I know the first thing I would change is I'd put your prices up, even by 20% or 15%, because it will have no impact. The yield pricing will outweigh 100% the lack in what you think is conversions or uh, trials or whatever. So increasing your pricing. And then third is have add-ons. Look at the features that maybe in your middle plan are only being used by 30 to 40% of the customers and consider ripping it out and charging a price per month for it so that it can be used by folks in the smaller and the upper end plan. Um, and it, it increases your app ARPU, ARPA. Sorry, I keep mixing them up. So average revenue per account, but here's the kicker is most of you guys can just add a premium level of service, a premium support feature as an add-on, maybe a hundred bucks a month, and that will raise your average revenue per account. So just do those things to make sure that you can increase your monetization, your revenue from your current customers so you can reinvest it in growth. Number three, grow customers. So the third option you have to, to kind of push off the growth ceiling is to increase the number of new customers that you add on a monthly basis. So if you're stuck at 10, Every month, you need to go to 12, 14, 15, 16. How do you do that? Here's the strategy. One is you have to do a growth map. You have to analyze what you're working on right now and figure out where's the ROI. Because you could be doing stuff today that you don't even know is working, but because you haven't looked at all the different channels and marketing and where customers are coming and hearing about you, you don't even know where you should invest your time to amplify those channels, okay? So that's one. That's the auditing of your growth map. And then number two is you gotta operationalize your, your, your funnel. So the way I think about it is there's four key steps to any marketing funnel. There's the channel you put your message in, there's a lead magnet that you use to convert the, the, the viewer to an email address. The third is the conversion tool you're gonna use to convince them to buy your product. So it's either a trial, a, a demo, or a proof of concept sale. Very similar to demo, but more for enterprise. And then third, if people don't buy or they're in the trial process, what's your follow-up formula? What do you send on a frequency to make sure that you educate them and convince them that your product is the best solution for them? So if you don't operationalize this, then it's never gonna work. And then the third that you wanna consider is even moving up market. You know, Some of you guys have products that could sell to a bigger customer. And by doing that, you may reduce the number of customers, but you'll increase your average revenue per account because it's a bigger, deal, but you need to grow your customers. So quick recap, how to use your growth ceiling to motivate you to make critical changes in your business in a positive way. Number one, we need to reduce churn. Number two, we have to increase our ARPA, average revenue per account. And number three, we need to grow our customers. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I wanna share with you a free resource called the Churn Buster Cheat Sheet. It's my process, the five core principles that you need to implement to think about reducing churn across your business. And then the nine specific strategies that you want to use to be able to instrument, learn, and fix your churn. If you're losing customers, they're coming in the top of the funnel and it's like a leaky bucket and they're leaving, click the link below to download your copy of the Churn Buster Cheat Sheet. And if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button, click the notification bell so you get notified when I drop new videos twice per week. Every week I drop new videos. And if there's somebody that you think that could uh, benefit from this video, feel free to share it with them directly. As per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. Dan, how do you fix it? Well, great question, let me talk about it.